Uh, hey guys, how's it going? Um, I wanted to show you some new features in Form Builder. Um, and the first one that I want to show you is the ability to put forms within forms. And uh, this is a way that you can basically create a form and then reuse it in other forms very easily. Uh, so in this case, I've created a form called address, and it contains the common fields for collecting somebody's mailing address or you know, location. So I created this form with these fields, and now I can reuse it in any other forms. Started setting up another form called test, and right now I've just got first and last name in it. And I'm going to make it look a little bit better. There we go. Okay, and now I want to ask for their address here. So I'm going to add a new field and select form as the type. And I'll call this work address or work location. Then I have to select what form that I want to show. So I'm going to choose address and then the type of label that I want to precede the form. In this case, I'm going to choose uh, headline three. And I'll save that. And let's preview that. So you can see now I've got the address in there. Um, but let's say that I also want to ask for their home location. So let's add another form. I'll choose address again. And I'm going to choose the same headline, save, preview. And you can see there we've got our work and home address in that form. OK, now let's look at how we might split this form into multiple pages or paginations. So uh, before we do that, I'm going to add a few more fields to this form just so we've got a little bit more to work with here. So I'm going to use import and paste some data from another form and select a few fields to add in here. All right, those look good. And I'm going to change the location of them. All right, that looks good. Let's have a look at that. So we've added an email address, website, and a comments field. And I want to split these on three paginations so that I've got these first four fields on the first pagination, the two locations on the second pagination, and the comments on the third pagination. So the way we do that is we add a new field of type page break for Form Builder. We can choose to display a headline above the pagination. I'm going to choose to go with uh, an H2 headline there. I'm going to drag that to the top. Let's see what that looks like. So you can see in this case, there's only one pagination, so it just creates a headline at the top. But let's go ahead and add another. We'll call this next pagination uh, location information. drag that above those two location fields, which are separate forms. Put that right above the comments field. Save. And let's try that out. Comments. 
So that's all there is to it. All right. So this has just been a test form that we've been looking at. But what I'd like to show you is a real life uh, live example of a form that I'm building uh, as an employment form. And uh, this is kind of a large form. Let's go ahead and navigate to it. So we've got 47 fields in this form, but in reality it actually translates to uh, more than 100 inputs because we're using the form input type here in multiple places uh, for collecting various addresses, for collecting personal references, school information, employer information. So we've got a lot going on in this form and we actually got nine page breaks. So this is a pretty extensive form. Let's go ahead and take a look at it on the front end. And uh, I've already filled out most of it, so I'm just going to click through it so you can see it. So you can see this is our address form that we've got here embedded within. There it is again. We've got one for each employer. And yet again, here is another form called school that I've embedded three times to collect information for high school, college, and other school. And then here are personal references, which we've embedded three times for uh, three different references. We've got the file uploads. And that's that. Now, last week I showed you how you can adjust column width for fields in the core on the dev branch. Uh, just in case you didn't see that, basically you can click here and drag. And so you can do the same thing in Form Builder, like I'm showing you right now. And it snaps to whatever it thinks is the right one. Now, in Form Builder, you can also do something else, which is you can double click to have it. Uh, make a field required or not required. So if it's got the little star there, that means it's required. Or if it doesn't have the little star there, then it's not required. Um, I like being able to do this quickly because when I'm building a form, I don't like to have required fields interfering with me testing the form. But when I want to launch the form, I like to quickly turn on all the required fields. Or uh, I just like to be able to adjust that sort of thing really quickly and easily. So Form Builder lets you do that. All right, that's all I've got for today. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, and this is uh, my new cat. This is Andrew. Say hi. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.